call her the old lady. She's an 040 narrow gauge steam engine, and she works on the Tallylin Railway in northern Wales. Built in 1865, she is the oldest operating locomotive in the world. Presently, a lady asks, What's happening, George? <laughs> I think a piece fell off the engine. Oh, don't be silly. So George inquires, I say, young man, what's happening down there? Oh, a piece fell off the engine. This is it, Gary. Where'd it come from? Oh, that's the, uh, uh, that comes off the, uh, the, no, oh, do without that. where the railway runs is encircled by gaunt and silent hikes, the Cambrian Mountains of Wales. The reason for the Tallylin's existence lies here. These were the quarries of Bryn Eglwys. Men dug slate here, and they built their buildings of it, and they lived in them for 90 years. And then the slate gave out. Down below, the quarry men had laid a railway to carry their slate out of the mountains to the sea. When the quarries closed, the Tally Lynn was about to be demolished. But a little band of enthusiasts showed up and objected. It's too nice to scrap, they said. Please, couldn't we have it instead? And they could. An entire railway as a gift. They've been running it ever since. Simply for the joy of it. What sort of people are they, these amateur railroaders? Well, this engine driver is an actor on the BBC television in London. The fireman, on the other hand, is only 14 and has to spend part of his day in school. The brakeman, on leave from an overseas job with an oil company. The switchman, a bank accountant in Manchester. But running trains isn't all. They also serve who only stand and bash things with a sledgehammer. Here in the switchyard, other volunteers are at work tracking down the intricate ills of ancient equipment. Over here, a civil engineer from Sussex. A Yorkshire bus driver. Strangely assorted types, perhaps, but with one thing in common. They're doing a job, a hard job, and they'd rather be doing it than anything else they can think of. They call themselves the Tally Lynn Railway Preservation Society. Now, here's a little difficulty the society has to deal with fairly frequently, a caboose off the rails. another idea. Someone almost always does. There. Done. Things can be terribly confusing sometimes, especially when you've only just joined the Preservation Society and you're anxious to do everything exactly right.
the society's members know exactly what they're doing. The boys in the repair shop, for example. Engines that have been pounding up and down that bumpy track since 1865 develop all sorts of obscure geriatric complaints, and these fellows have to be ready for anything. One of the things steam engines often do is spring a leak in the boiler. This requires welding. Six times a day, an engine stands in the main station, quietly huffing under its breath, waiting for customers. Just as people come a hundred miles or more to work on the Tally Lynn, so others come from as far to ride on it and to see the valley of the Avon Bethayu, through which it runs. runs from Tawen, which is on the sea, to Abergenolwen, which is pretty much nowhere. Total distance, six and three-quarter miles. Journey time, 45 minutes. Average speed, nine miles per hour. Conveniently, all the stations are on the same side of the track, so the coaches only have to have doors on one side. Sure, trains pass neatly at sidings instead of colliding on the main line. Drivers pick up something called a staff every so often. Before he can enter a new section, the driver must have the proper staff with him. Since there's only one per section, this is an ironclad guarantee that nobody else will be coming the other way. After all those years of Welsh weather, Cross ties decay, spikes get looser, rails spread dangerously. Finally, a wheel jumps the tracks, and then... Derailed. A long, exhilarating mountain walk ahead. The gauge is supposed to be two feet three inches. When it isn't, there's almost always trouble. Working here in the lonely mountains, struggling to lift eight tons of engine back onto the rails with one small jack, this too is part of the challenge, the adventure. And amongst the British, adventures are properly met with a somewhat grim expression on the face. And then a discovery from the refreshment stock, some leftover ice cream, which is all the dinner they'll have this night. And so the engine sits, being wrestled inch by inch back onto the rails. It's past midnight before the job's finished. Every morning, some hapless volunteer comes down to the engine shed in the cold Welsh dawn to start fires. First, some cotton waste soaked in gasoline, then a few discarded cross ties. Later on, when this is burning well, comes the coal. Two and a half hours later, the kettle boils. This rig is a construction train, off to replace some more of that moldering track. Yard by yard, the Preservation Society is relaying the entire line. Only a railway man will realize how staggering a task this is for people who can only work at it in their spare time. Second-hand standard gauge ties, sawed in half for the narrow gauge.
last ballast is tamped in, regular service gets underway again. In the switchyard, the old lady starts off, sprightly and full of zip, to pick up her train. But occasionally, someone on a switch will make a mistake. And some of these mistakes have to be discovered the hard way. However, small railways generally have small accidents. The wagon will need a little repair, but the old lady goes right off to work again. are prepared to stop pretty much anywhere for anyone. The railway caters, for example, to a number of farmers' wives who go into town every Friday and come back on the afternoon train, accompanied by the week's supplies. Preservation Society, men who have found a challenge and take a special sort of joy in answering it. They found a railway which was crumbling slowly into dust and made it come alive again. And it may just be that another generation will thank them for preserving the Tally Lynn. For it is a relic, this railway, a bit of ornamental scroll work lifted from the pattern of yesterday and kept as a memento.